for you all. Here's my gazebo window. It is. I got to put these together. These two blocks here are not connected. So I got to connect those. And um, I got it hanging on the bottom as far as I want it. Because it's going to have a border. And I got it hanging on this side as far as I want it. Maybe not that far, but we'll see. And let me see how much more. I have to add to it in order for it to be this is a full size a uh, queen size bed and as you can see it's I gotta do more at the top so maybe another 80 blocks or so but I did count the windows in here and I have 728 and I have 200 because each one of these blocks here, each one of these here is 50 blocks. That's 50 blocks in each one of these. And um, so with that being said, I still got a lot more to go on it, you know. But we're going to be working. I think I'm going to, this piece here is, is, a, is put together. So I think I'm going to connect these two pieces here. Go ahead and connect those two pieces. Work this part right here. And or I could just add one at a time. I may just add one at a time so I won't have so much in my lap. But this is where I am on it. Like I said, I got 728 windows. And 200 blocks so far. So I got a lot more to do on it. Then once I put my uh, border on it. I'm going to put the border on it. And uh, <clears throat> that's why I don't want to hang in any lower than that. Excuse me. And I'm going to put a border on it. Probably. I don't know what size yet. But I'm going to iron these right here because I've been holding them in my hand. I'm going to iron these down and connect them and then I'll go to work on finishing up the block, getting that finished and making some more blocks. And I'll get back with you guys. All right. I'm going to show you next I'm going to show you some um work that I'm doing on the grandma's flower garden. So, I'm going to also Put that into this video. Probably do a little hand sewing on my um, hexagons. Putting the grandmother's flower garden. I work two days a week on it. And actually I work more than two days a week. Because I take it when I go and wait on my grandson at school. And I usually go like an hour and a half. Or an hour and 15 minutes before he gets out. That gives me some time to sew on it. And just chill out. Have some me time. Alright, I'll be back with that project and let you see it. Alright, be back. Okay, I am uh, getting ready to connect this block here. And as you see how I got it pinned. What I'm worried about is this intersection right here. I want to make sure all this meet up. And the good thing about it, when you have it pinned at the bottom right here and at the top, you can adjust yourself if you need be with the, at this pin. So, I'm going to get this done. And uh, make sure you just look under the bottom. Make sure they're lining up and everything. And you can... Uh, I'm putting the, the other, I'm going to go right here. I'm adding 50 blocks to the one that's already needed. So right there, I'm going to take my pins out because I stick myself all the time. And then I can come back right here. It's a lot of pin in here. 
and it's a lot of you got to pay attention but i already have a video on how to connect these blocks and since i have so much here to work with i am going to deal with this and uh, i will just deal with it get it together here and then i'll show you my final project uh, the final outcome of it once I get it dead. So, get that pen out. And the, I mean, it's just a slow go. I'm holding this thing in my lap and holding it with all these pens. So, um, I'm still going to stick myself. I always do. But I want to make sure I get in there and stay on my lines. And I press these back down. So I would have a good visual on my lines because it was all wrinkled where I had held it in my hand. But I'm going to get this done and I'll, get, I'll come back with you and show you when I get it done. Okay, I got this one attached. That's the top of it. I got to tack these down. And I didn't... I stopped at this block right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect this in uh, because right here I stopped right here stopped at this block here so I'll probably go ahead and tack those down and get those did and then I'll come and connect this part and connect those and then that'll just leave me to connect out yeah to do to connect them in the middle so i think that'll be that's my best bet but i have to take down all my blocks now and I think on the other video I showed you all how to tack them down. And I'll go ahead and do those. It's only a... It's not that many. I can do those in no time. So, getting this put together, I can get it in no time. Alright, I'll come back. Next video you see... I mean, next part of my video will be on the grandmother's flower garden. Talk to you in a few. Bye. Hello, everyone. I was showing you that I was connecting my gazebo window uh, quilt, the blocks, and um, I said I was going to show you, I was going to do a little sewing on the grandmother's flower garden today. Uh, I'm not going to do much on that. Um, I'll make a video later about it, but um, I wanted to show it to you. This is some of it. And uh, I've been working on when I be at school with my waiting on my little grandson. And some nights I work on it. But I've really been trying to get the gazebo windows. You can't see all of that. But um, I'm going to do a little bit of sewing for you on it. And show you how... Um, some of you may get confused once you start, you know, you get your your middle, middle section filled in. And, you know, you just keep going around and around. And, and this right here, you're going to have to close it up with the green. And then you add your flower. I always add my flowers from the sides. I keep it like this. Do the four on the top and add from that. So that way I don't get a flower crooked. And it's uh, it's it's very, uh, it's something that will keep you occupied. Keep your mind, um, give you time to yourself. And just, when I do this, I have time to myself. Anytime I hand stitch, I have time to myself. But I'm going to drop the camera down and we're going to sew a few hexagons on. And I think, yeah, this is the one I was sewing on today. This is the one that I made a mistake and put the solids on the outside. And my mother didn't want me to redo it. So um, I added it. And 
Now I'm just doing the green around it so I can somewhere get it in the middle. If I don't get it in the middle, that's okay too. But I'm going to show you a little bit of sewing on it and I'll be right back. Okay, this is where I left off today. I was picking up my grandson, so I was working on this one here and I left off. So I'm going to pick back up there. And the good thing about this paper, you can just fold it. I make sure my edges meet down here. And uh, I just start right here in the corner. And I make my I make two knots in that corner, which when I stopped, I also had made two knots on it. And uh, I just pull them tight. I'll make sure I keep that in the frame for you. And just make my two knots. I usually keep it in my lap and uh, but actually so in here is pretty comfortable I just want to make sure I'm keeping it in the frame but you just pick up a little bit at a time I keep it between my fingers kind of sometimes I get carried away and forget to and that, that kind of helps you keep the thread from getting twisted all up and everything. I'm always getting my hair up in here. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, if you would like to do one of these quilts, my hexagons are really small. I wanted a small hexagon when I started mine. Some people make them, uh, I think most of the time they're an inch and a half or two inches but mine is I think it's 15 16 inches right at almost an inch it's not quite an inch um, and which I know it's gonna take more hexagons to do this but that's okay and uh, I don't really mind it so much but that was my preference you know yours you do whatever you like. And right when I get almost in the middle of mine, I always just kind of, I always make me a knot. And the reason I make that knot is so I keep my stitches tight, firm there. And I go on up. Um, like I say, I like, I like doing that. I like doing both quilts, I, I really do. But um, both of these quilts take a long time to do, so don't be in a hurry to do them. And, you know, once you start doing them, even making the hexagons, you'll be doing it, and it won't take, it won't seem as long. But one thing about this quilt, like I said before, is you can always go back and make hexagons if you get bored with putting your flowers on but once you started putting flowers on you really want to keep putting flowers on because you want to see what the quilt is going to turn out to be you want to add your flowers you want to see and arrange them you know you just anticipate the ending of it or at least half of it anyway I took out two bigger bites so you know don't don't get uh, too ahead of yourself that you take out too big a bite on that. You just want to pick up a little bit. And what I do with my flowers, I make all my flowers, and then I I uh, iron them and relax the seams. Cause, um, and you know, make sure you don't take the paper out if you still, you don't have all corners of that hexagon. Right here I make my knot make my knot I do two knots and then I'm ready to add my next hexagon I have my bag in here and I just keep I do a lot of, I did a lot of these I think I did 200 so far 258 was in this bag so that's gonna kind of help me to count all the hexagons I got 
and you just, you know, you do, you just, I just look at mine, see what it's looking like on the front, and kind of place my hexagon, because these, it's got a floor print in it, and I just stick it on there, just put it there, line them up, line up my points. and start back sewing so make sure you don't take a little bite especially in your corners because if you go too deep in your corners you'll see your stitches but you want to get those corners let's see let me flip it i can't see over it i shouldn't okay you want to get those corners, and I made two knots when I stopped, and I made two more knots. But, I mean, I do it so fast now. Make sure you keep your hexagon side by side. And this is the reason I like doing the thread basting. Because I can always stick my needle down and pull up if I'm too tight on my... If I'm too tight on my paper, I was fighting with that. It shouldn't have been. Got it out of line. And, you know, once you pick it up at a point, like, I can feel the paper. So I don't want to go through the paper. And I can just kind of pick it up without taking it loose, you know, or messing it up. I don't have to worry about it so much. But I am um, excited to get this one. At least a little bigger anyway. I have no idea how many flowers this is going to take me. I have um, probably about 15 or 16 that I have ready to put in the quilt. Uh, with the background around them. And then I probably got another 10 where I just have did the centerpieces, just made the flowers. But, you know, just take your time. Relax your mind. And uh, you'll make a pretty quilt. You know, before you know it, you'll have a really pretty quilt. So I'm about in the center of that, and I'm going to tie it off like I did before. I'm not going to go too deep into this tonight. Um, my next video, I think I have a bunch of um, Halloween uh, fabric. I think. I'm going to make me a Halloween quilt, but it won't be by hand. It'll be on the machine. I just got to figure out what kind of quilt I want, what kind of pattern I'm going to use. I kind of thought about windmills. I've kind of thought about some kind of stars. Um, I just need to go in the garage and get the material and see what I come up with. So I may next week be showing you the, the material and the pattern for a Halloween quilt. That's, I'm going to make a Halloween quilt. I'm not big into decorating or anything because the kids are gone. I'm at the end, so I'm going to tie that off. If you want, I'm going to show you more of, of sewing this and just sitting and talking to you. And uh, see, I got that one on, and I'm just gonna take my thread. I'm gonna go back down in it. Now go down behind this material, this fold here. You can see I go behind that fold, and I just come out, come out down at the bottom, and then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to sew on this. Sew this now. And you know, with this paper, you just fold it down, and you're ready to sew. So it's real simple. 
but that's what I'm doing. I'm going to pull this up and talk to you. Okay, like I say, um, I think uh, I'm going to do a Halloween quilt and I'm going to show, them, show you my material and the pattern next week. I'll do a video on that and show you and I'll do some cutting on that and some putting the blocks together and put that quilt top together. I never did a Halloween quilt. Hadn't did a Christmas quilt. So I thought, why not? I mean, because I got a lot of material that I bought and I think I was paid like 38 cents for it, you know. A couple of years ago at Walmart, they were getting rid of their Halloween fabric. And I think I... I don't think I have any Christmas. I think I may have one bowl of Christmas fabric. But anyway, I got to go in there and dig it out and look and see what I have. But I'll see you guys next week. If you like what you've seen on this video, please, doesn't cost you a thing. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell on all and you will see all my upcoming videos. And like I said, it doesn't cost you a lot. It doesn't cost you anything. I see a lot of you watch my videos you don't even give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up uh, let me know you like it and if it's something you want to see uh, leave it in the comments and I will uh, get around to uh, getting that done for you uh, I, I want to thank all my new subscribers for coming over thank you thank you very much and I'm gonna let you all go and I hope you all enjoy your weekend Y'all have a blessed day. God bless you and your family. Bye-bye.